My name is Allison Carey. I'm a physician scientist in the Department of Pathology, and I'm really honored to have the opportunity today to tell you a little bit about my research program and the career path that brought me to the University of Utah. So I work on a group of pathogens called mycobacteria, shown magnified behind me. And these deadly bacteria include the bug that causes tuberculosis, which infects a quarter of the world's population. I'm interested in how these bacteria are able to evolve traits such as antibiotic resistance and virulence. And to answer these questions, I apply advanced genetic and genomic techniques to bacterial isolates that come from patients. So I was first inspired to become a doctor by my uncle Jack, shown here as a young staff physician reading a 16-lead EKG. Uncle Jack is a neurologist. He served a rural patient population in western Pennsylvania, where I grew up. And Uncle Jack had a pager. And as a kid, I thought that seemed incredibly cool and exciting. It was only many years later that I realized what a burden carrying a pager can actually be. So when I went to college, it was with the intention of attending medical school afterwards. I had no interest in research. And it was only on the advice of my freshman faculty advisor, who suggested that I get involved in an undergraduate research program, that I went into the lab. But once I was in the lab, I was hooked. I loved working at the bench, I loved the scientific process, and I discovered I had a particular interest in genetics. The idea that health or disease could be encoded by a DNA sequence was fascinating to me. So my senior year, I decided to apply for MD-PhD programs, essentially because I couldn't decide whether I wanted to be a doctor, like Uncle Jack, or a scientist. So I was really lucky to get into the Yale MD-PhD program, and at Yale, I worked with Dr. John Carlson for my PhD work. He's an expert in the genetics of this tiny fruit fly, Drosophila, and an incredible mentor. The Drosophila fruit fly has been a powerhouse for genetic research for a long time. And it was the specific project that I worked on in John's lab that got me interested in infectious diseases. So I used the fruit fly as a model for another insect, the Anopheles gambiae mosquito. The Anopheles mosquito has been called the most deadly animal in the world because it transmits the malaria parasite, which infects millions and kills hundreds of thousands every year. This got me thinking about pathogen genetics, because the malaria parasite is constantly acquiring mutations that makes it resistant to antimalarial drugs. So after finishing my MD-PhD and then my residency in pathology, I wanted to continue working with a globally significant pathogen. So I went to the Harvard School of Public Health to work with Dr. Sarah Fortune. She's a world expert in tuberculosis and an incredible person. Tuberculosis causes chronic and often destructive and lethal infections of the lungs. We don't think about tuberculosis a lot in this country because it's no longer endemic here, but it actually used to be, and in fact, it shaped the American West. Patients moved in droves out west to recover in the clean mountain air at TB sanatoriums. There actually used to be a TB sanatorium in Ogden, it's shown in this photo. It was open until the late 1960s. But TB isn't a disease of history. It remains a global health emergency. It kills a million individuals every single year. One of the reasons TB remains such a global health problem is because it continues to adapt and evolve, with more antibiotic resistant and more virulent strains emerging. So as a postdoctoral fellow in Sarah's group, I built on my training in classical Drosophila genetics to develop a suite of sophisticated genomic tools to study TB isolates that come from patients. This allowed me to interrogate how TB is responding to clinical interventions such as antibiotics and vaccination. After completing my fellowship, it was time to look for a job, and I was really excited to learn that the University of Utah was recruiting physician scientists. It was really the perfect fit for me, not just because of the strong and collegial scientific community that I found here, but also because the Department of Pathology is home to ARUP laboratories. ARUP is one of the nation's largest clinical reference labs, and they're a key collaborator for my research program because the microbiology labs there process a high volume of mycobacteriology specimens from patients all across the country. So I'd like to tell you about one particular project that I'm really excited about. And this is focused on a bug that's related to the pathogen that causes tuberculosis, and it's called Mycobacterium avium. 
Mycobacterium avium is an environmental microbe that's ubiquitous. It's found in places we encounter every day, such as tap water and soil. Mycobacterium avium tends to affect vulnerable populations, the immune compromised, the elderly, individuals with underlying lung diseases like cystic fibrosis. And like tuberculosis, mycobacterium avium can cause chronic lung infections. And like tuberculosis, it's very difficult to treat. It actually takes a year and a half of continuous antibiotic therapy to cure the average mycobacterium avium infection. That's three times as long as a typical TB treatment course. Infections from mycobacterium avium are on the rise. They're increasing in incidence and prevalence, and they far outnumber infections from tuberculosis here in the United States. There are a number of factors that are driving this increase, but one um, reason is that more virulent strains of mycobacterium avium appear to be emerging. My interest lies in understanding how some strains of mycobacterium avium are able to make that leap from an environmental microbe into a human pathogen and set up a chronic infection. And once an infection is established, how are these bugs able to survive such prolonged antibiotic exposure? To answer these questions, I look at isolates of mycobacterium avium that come from the environment and come from patients. And with my collaboration with AREP, I've been able to assemble a large collection of clinical isolates of mycobacterium avium and sequence their genomes. So these strains are shown in this phylogenetic tree, which shows the genetic relationships among these strains. We then take these strains into the lab. We perform experiments in vitro and in vivo to test phenotypes like antibiotic resistance or virulence. Integrating this phenotypic data with the genome data across a large and genetically diverse set of strains, like the one we've assembled, we can begin to associate particular bacterial genes and genetic variants with traits of interest. But if we were to do this one strain at a time, it would take a prohibitive amount of time and effort. So to increase the efficiency of this experimental work, as a postdoc at Harvard, I developed a technique that involves tagging each strain with a unique sequence barcode this sequence barcode, or tag, acts as a unique identifier and allows us to pool all of the strains into a single experiment, dramatically increasing the efficiency of our work. This allows us to associate bacterial genes and traits of interest. One bacterial trait that I'm particularly interested in is called antibiotic tolerance. Tolerance is the ability of a bug to survive prolonged antibiotic exposure without being resistant in the traditional sense. And this tolerance trait is thought to be the reason why it takes so long for mycobacterium avium infections to be cured. So we're using our barcoding technique and our large clinical strain collection of mycobacterium avium isolates from AREP to interrogate tolerance phenotypes and uncover the bacterial genes that are driving this trait. This approach can be used with numerous other phenotypes of interest, such as virulence, and in principle, any bacterial pathogen. This work was recently funded by an NIH New Innovator Award, which funds high-risk, high-reward research. We're excited to see where this project goes, and we hope that eventually it leads to better treatments for these really challenging infections. I'd like to thank my many mentors over the years. I've only been able to acknowledge a couple. Collaborators here at the U and across the country, the members of my small but growing lab, and the funding that makes this work possible. And finally, I'm happy to report that as a molecular pathologist and a researcher, I no longer carry a pager. Thank you. <laughs>